Good afternoon. Hello, I'm Beth Copeland with Georgia Christian Business Network, and we're putting God back in business. It's Wellness Wednesday. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so excited today. It's the month of April, but I have to tell you, as I said on my live just a few minutes ago, I'm excited also because it's Holy Week and Palm Sunday, early morning, I had an opportunity to reflect a little bit on just um, reflecting on what it must have been like for to be a part of the crowd and the king entering Jerusalem and they were laying down the palm branches and and I'm just like so excited about this week because it's so important to the Christian and for those that are believer believers the Christian community so that would in believers. But the thing that I'm focused on today related to that is he brought in newness. Although he knew he was being challenged to go through an opportunity that would end death, in death, basically. He was going to die. He was entering to die. But there was purpose associated with that. So the opportunity that we have is what are we entering in? Does it have purpose? How does it challenge us? And are we making the right decisions to continually move forward in the thing that God has purpose for our lives? Knowing that elevation is going to come because he knew that although it looked to be death, and it was going to be death, but that wasn't the end of the story. We get caught up in what it looks like. And so our decisions are sometimes not very wise. So I want to applaud my co-host, Pamela Bridgman Bartell for the, her foresight in seeing that wisdom is something that we need to focus on and that the Holy Spirit put in my spirit to tell you, Pamela, sometimes we too often discount wisdom. And wisdom is urgent and of the most importance as a believer to making the right decisions. So I'm going to, at this point, tell you, thank you for joining us today on Wellness Wisdom, uh, well, Wellness Wednesday, and you use wisdom by joining us. So thank you, Pamela Bridgman Bartell, for being a GCBN corporate sponsor for just being a part of this platform for the last almost going on two and a half, almost three years now. So we're so blessed to have you and your wisdom as a part of this platform. Would you please tell the people who you are, what you do and why it's important for them to know? I'm blessed to be a part of the platform, uh, Beth. I'm really uh, just humble that God has, God took me in, in the pathway, in your pathway, and, and uh, you granted, you gave me the invitation, or extended the invitation to be a part of GCP. It's been a, a blessing in my life. My name is Pamela Bridgman Bartell, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I also hold credentials as a certified clinical trauma professional and a master um, clinical addictions, a master certified addictions counselor. Um, and I have been providing compassionate care for uh, since 1976. And I was a therapist or as a, as a pastor um, in the United States, of course, better than I own a practice here in Northwest Georgia, in Cartersville specifically, called the Healing Journey Counseling and Consultation. Yeah. Uh, awesome. And this month we are going to be focusing on, on wisdom. Uh, I was uh, each month, uh, Beth tasked me with uh, uh, hearing from the Holy Spirit uh, as to what it is that, that we're going to present on this platform. And I was just, I was, you know, I was completely, I didn't have anything at all. And I was just sitting on the edge of my bed, and the Holy Spirit said, Wisdom is fundamental. And then that's when I was like, okay, where do I know that from? Oh, it's Proverbs. 
uh, Proverbs 4 and 7, although the word fundamental isn't there in Proverbs 4 and 7, what it says is wisdom is the principal thing. And obviously a synonym for principle is fundamental. Uh -huh. When I heard uh, in my spirit, wisdom is fundamental, given away my age, uh, when I was growing up, uh, there was a number of, you know, the little shows on TV to teach children. And I remember that part of it, reading Rainbow, they would say reading is fundamental. And I learned that the reason reading was fundamental is because without knowing how to read, there was so much else you wouldn't be able to understand. And that's the same thing. Without having wisdom, there's so much more you won't be able to access. So that's just like reading is fundamental to for little kids to, to begin to mature and learn you know, how to make it in the world. Wisdom is fundamental for us to be able to make it spiritual that, as well. Exactly. Go ahead. Ben. No, no, I was just going to agree with you. I'm just agreeing with you. That is, this is so awesome because when I said earlier uh, that we too often discount wisdom and it's because I don't think we recognize what truly is wisdom. Um, we fly by the seat of our pants. About. Yeah, yeah. To, to but let's read the rest of that scripture too, though, Beth. It does, oh, it yeah. starts with wisdom is the principal thing, but then it goes on to say, therefore, get wisdom, yeah, wisdom. and, and in, all their, in all your getting, get yeah, understanding. Get, Understanding. Uh, mm -hmm. The amplified version, the beginning of wisdom is get skillful and godly wisdom. It is preeminent. And with all you're acquiring, get understanding. That is, yeah. have spiritual discernment, mature comprehension, and logical interpretation so that you're not all willy nilly all over, over the place. In other words, Wisdom is not somebody's private interpretation. No. There is no. no such thing as my truth and your truth. There's the truth. You almost made me spit out my coffee. Oh my God, that is so good right there because that's a trend. Excuse me for interrupting, but that is such a trend right now. This is my truth. This is my truth. If your truth is not in alignment with the truth, the truth. It's, just, it's just a thought. It's just your opinion, but it's not facts related to what is the truth. And Toby, I don't know why I'm hearing this in my spirit, but I'm hearing to ask you to comment on that. Can you hear me, Toby? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Um, awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm really. I'm hearing to ask you to comment on that. I'm. 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 I'm that's okay. I have been. Have a, <clears throat> I've had a big problem with people talking about my truth because it does. If it's not his truth, and it's not he says he is the truth. So my truth is just another way of saying that I disagree with him on what truth really is. That I have a different version of it because there's only one truth. Facts change, but truth never changes. Why? And therefore, we can't assume that because then we buy into this idea that um, we can say things and they not be lies. That's the thing that I'm thinking. Like, we'll say stuff because it's our opinion, but it still can be a lie. Right. Um, oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. Is it justification, Toby, as well? Is it justification? Yes. Yeah. For what okay. we want to do and how we want to see things. But that's not our calling as because we are supposed to see things as he sees them. We right. are supposed to be like him. So if we have anything in disagreement with that, even if it feels good to us, it's still a lie. It's still a lie. <laughs> He's always right. He's always oh, Pamela, right. thank you. Thank okay. you for uh, following. Yeah, I, I, just, I just heard that strongly in my spirit. I am probably going to want you to chime in 
and a few other things too, Toby. Let me get to this next point. Um, I want to, de de to define rather fundamental. So when something is fundamental, right, it's essential. That means it's basic, it's, it's the primary thing and must be considered before everything else. The principal thing literally describes in the Hebrew language something that is the head or at the top. It describes something that is first or something that is at the beginning. So a really good translation of this phrase about uh, wisdom being fundamental that would be wisdom is the first thing or it is the top thing. So moreover, it is a correct application of knowledge. Get this, you hear? It is the correct application of knowledge. Keep that in mind. I'm gonna come mm -hmm. back to it. Uh, that's why Proverbs admonishes us to not only have wisdom, but also to get understanding which is insight and awareness. I like the way Joseph Prince puts it. He says that there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge pops up, according to 1 Corinthians 8 and 1, and it can make you proud and arrogant. But wisdom will make you humble and teachable. Wisdom should be the top priority in our life. It should come at the beginning, and be the starting for how we take in and process knowledge. Without wisdom, hear this, without wisdom, knowledge can be dangerous. Wow, wow. And, and that is so powerful right there. Without wisdom, it could be very, very, your knowledge could be very, very dangerous. This is the deal that from my perspective is people do have knowledge God has given you knowledge to know how to do a thing. It's not the question of your skill level or the knowledge that you have. Even I'm going to throw experience in there. All of those things that you think, oh, I can run with. But if you don't make wisdom the top priority, I think you said, or you say it somewhere in your notes, if it's not <laughs> your most urgent pro priority, and I, I, I know that we're going to get to this, but wisdom, if you're not sure if you're making um, a, a wise decision or if you have an urgent decision to make that's really going to impact your life, don't make it without consulting with wise counsel. Why? There is Do it safety. next week. Go I'm ahead. going next week. Oh, Go sorry, ahead, though. Sorry, Finish sorry. right. Finish okay. Right. Be, because this is the deal, because you need to have safety and there's safety in a multitude of counselors. And when you're making a life changing decision, if you make it so low without bouncing it off of someone else, more often than not, you're not seeing something that God is trying to, God may put it before you, but you need to always, you know, I, I, there's an opportunity that God will put it in your spirit. Go ahead, do this. Wonderful. But the thing that you have to do more often than not is bathe it in wisdom and seek wise counsel. And let me put another phrase in there. Timing. Okay. Timing. Yes. Okay. So wisdom is the correct application of knowledge and that application has to come within the correct or the, the uh, perfect timing, God timing. I, I look at the scripture where it talks about how Christ was made into us wisdom first. Christ, Christ is our wisdom. But we're, we're told that God didn't even reveal, God revealed Christ in his perfect timing. Yeah. Wisdom is applied at the correct time. If you yeah. try to do something, even if it is something that uh, looks as though it would do well, and, and we can apply this in a business sense. Let's okay. say that you have an excellent strategy and everything about that strategy 
says that it should prosper. But if you implement that strategy at the incorrect time, then it is not going to do to succeed. what you are expecting it to do. Mm -hmm. So you have not been wise, right? Yeah. Because wisdom is the correct application of that strategy. Yes. You did not yes. correctly apply your timing was on. So, so wisdom you, 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 implies timing as well. Exactly. Because I just said this, God put it in my spirit to share with someone on yesterday that, yeah, I'm going to do that thing for you. That thing is ordained by me. It is going to happen, but wait. And that is the time and peace that you're, that I'm now you're even, I didn't even know until just now what God was saying until you just said that because time is, timing is of the essence. If we move ahead of God, what we're doing is we're moving alone. What we want to do is stay in rhythm with God and move in his timing because we don't want to go like in Exodus. If you're not there, God, don't take me. Mm -hmm. I just leave me right here till you are ready to release me. What we have to understand to walk in wisdom is to be obedient to God. And his timing, his purpose, he's got it all worked out. I don't even have to worry about that, you know? Right, right. So wisdom involves the correct application of knowledge. And part of that correct application of knowledge is doing it uh, or, or rather applying the knowledge at the, at the correct time. Why is it fundamental? Every challenge and battle we face requires godly wisdom to not overcome it. That's why it's fine. Everything we face, every challenge we face, we've got to have godly wisdom. Because what we mm. are finding, all you've got to do is not even pay close attention to everything that is going around us. And you find that man's wisdom is not bringing about a sense of contentment. It's not bringing about the uh, the peace, the joy uh, that that we need. Man's wisdom isn't doing it. There are policies that, that legislators are trying to pass that are not um, bring bring about uh, uh, peace in our, our towns, our cities, and, and and all of that. We need godly wisdom to face the challenges that we have on a uh, as a social worker. I'd say on a macro, <laughs> micro, macro uh, level. We need, you know, we need the godly wisdom for that because the manly wisdom, human wisdom, I feel them, is not doing that, right? So that's yeah. why it's so important that we, we, we access godly wisdom. Uh, Proverbs 4 verse 6 states that Wisdom protects us. And we're going to talk about that. And, and, and I'm going to really rely on you next week, uh, Beth, because we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. You talked about safety in the multitude of councils. So wisdom protects us. Being wise will help us make decisions that we will not later regret. Therefore, we can say that it is probably one of the most valuable attri attributes. Mm. We talk about internal attributes, right? You know, when we talk about integrity and all of those other internal attributes, then we can say wisdom, along with integrity, is one of the most valuable attributes we can possibly I, I love that, Pam, and I can't wait to next week, but I want to tag on to what you're saying right now because it's so powerful. I like the way it frames, and you know I'm coming from uh, the King James Version, but I love the way it says it more than once uh, in verse five. You just said it from the translation, but get wisdom, get understanding, and forget it not. Uh, neither decline from the words of my mouth. 
Okay, so the combination that he's saying to us, and I'm so thankful for this wise man of God that just joined us, uh, Melvin Everson, welcome. Um, and we'd like to get your input on this because he's one of the uh, wisest people that I know, um, but it's so urgent and important. He don't say that uh, it's something that is just going to fall in your lap. He said, so that's, basically yeah. get to, to get it is to go after it. And, and next and week when we're mean? talking about it, you're going to see just how it, it, it it's not just uh, a, a casual, you know, yes, we, James tells yeah. us it's simple, you know, we, we're going to ask and God is going to give us liberally, liberally and upright is not, but yeah. you know, we're also going to look at some other things along the way that entails that getting of wisdom and, 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 and how that um, uh, you make sure that it's not just uh, some surface uh, wisdom that you're getting. It's not, not surface. It really is right. the deep calling to deep, you know, that will begin to operate in your life, right? When and, you do it the way the word prescribes it. And you said operate in our lives. And, and that means things that will happen will fall in alignment with what God's path for us is to take. Meaning by that, um, wisdom unfolds reward and success. Um, when we follow that path, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Pamela, you know, when we're following a path and you know that God's equipped you and prepared you for this thing but he's not released it for you right now the That's wise the yeah for sure any comments sir you're, you're muted mute. you're mute can you hear me hey. now yes. we can yes okay I just want to echo what y'all were saying about wisdom. And when you get wisdom, you have to know when to apply it at the right time because life is lived forward and understood backwards. And you get all of this. Like yeah, you get all of this knowledge and then you have to know how to adequately apply it because a lot of times you misapply and you can cause more confusion than you intended for it to be. And I, I look upon wisdom, and when I was with Salem Baptist Church, uh, we had um, an opportunity to have some events that with the elders, where you get a lot of wisdom. I call it sitting at the feet of the elders. Yes. Oh, gosh, yes. yes. Oh, gosh, yes. And Beth, oh, you gosh. Know, I did that. That's why I would visit your mom. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And I mean, religiously, That's you why can count on him. To, to come by and visit and spend time with her and, and with all that Elsie does. And the thing about it, it was apparent that he enjoyed it. So now I'm hearing that. So yes. the, the, the thing for today's is that wisdom is fundamental. What was yes. it that sitting at her feet that caused it to feel or your experience to be that, that her wisdom was fundamental to you? Where well, her ability to drop, as I spoke with her, her ability to drop golden nuggets of life, because God did not allow her to get to that age without imparting some of his wisdom that she obtained from him. True wisdom comes from God in the world. Yes. That's where it comes from. And you pass it on. And as I stated earlier, life is lived forward and understood backwards. Uh -huh. when I those moments of reflections, I look back upon the time I spent with those elderly people sitting at the feet of the elders. I can look back and see the wisdom they imparted upon me. Now it's left to me, and I'm hearing them tell me now they are no longer walking amongst us here on earth, but they're telling me now, as I often think about all these that I've sat at the feet of elders and listened to them, they're telling me now, don't forget to pass it on. But the awesome. next year. Right. Awesome. Right. That, that, that is amazing because 
when we have awakened to truth, we find that we are my mom, you know, and, and, and those that we set at the feet of. I, I used to love just to my late father. I know you you didn't get to meet him, but I just loved to talk to him and mom. And and honestly, I have a book in me uh, called Momisms, uh, words of wisdom that I learned from my mom. And I really have it. Really, I just need to put the thing out there because honestly, it's about completed, you know. And because there's so much opportunity and wisdom. But one thing that you said is you said it was important to you and that was why you enjoy you enjoyed it it was obvious you enjoyed it why i said on that video or the live that i did prior to the show is now i didn't even understand what i was saying until you were talking why i said it because i think too often wisdom is discounted what you brought full circle for me and you're saying that we discount elderlies uh, those people that have lived and you don't you you understand that those people are so valuable because they have those golden nuggets to release to us uh, that we so need to make the right decisions I think sometimes when people put out something that God is doing or they've heard from God that he wants to do in in their life and the timing issue is of the essence, as Pamela just said earlier, but the opportunity, if they share it for wisdom, and then the person says something like, that's a great idea, but what I recommend you do is first, any deterrent from what the route they want to go is misinterpreted as you don't believe in me, or you don't think I can, I never get the encouragement that I, I'm, as you, opposed all of that, to huh? I said, as opposed to the person imparting wisdom to them. Right. In instead of recognizing what I'm giving you, sir, ma'am, is wisdom. I believe in you. And because I believe in you, I'm saying these things to you because I've traveled that road. And, and the interpretation is you really don't know because maybe you can't relate to technology or you don't, you're back from the, you know, 50s and 60s era. Listen, Ecclesiastes yeah. tells us what? Yeah. There's, There's nothing, nothing new, under the sun. new under the sun. Yeah, this is good. Thank you so yes. much, uh, sir, Miss Everson, for your comments here. Oh. And so, Toby? Uh, when we make wise decisions, um, we are able to have a long-term perspective. It's not just wise decisions are not just uh, impacting <coughs> the here and now. Wisdom allows us to have a long-term perspective. I, I, kind of, I, I really like what Reverend Everson just said. Wisdom, that, that, yes, that, how did you put it about yesterday? Uh, Life. Life is lived forward and understood backwards. And understood. I love that. Backwards. Yeah. And that that so it's it's that that long term term perspective. Let me tell you something else that wisdom does. It allows us to balance boundaries. It allows us to set, maintain boundaries. You wisdom allows you remember. The definition, or rather when we read from the Amplified Version of the scripture, it mm -hmm. says uh -huh. that we have spiritual discerning and mature comprehension. When we apply uh -huh. wisdom, we're able to discern how we allow people to speak into our lives or if we allow them to speak into our lives. That's one of the things that the application of wisdom does so that maintaining of boundaries healthy boundaries uh is one of the things that that we does. awesome that would almost take me into uh what i was going to say safety but we'll talk about that next week but um it is that protection for us 
And if we don't understand that, and that's why I believe that the second part to Proverbs 4, 7 is in all they're getting, get understanding. And we we don't, we, we wake up and, and we are immature. I'm, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but um, Toby made the comment in the chat here that amen, true wisdom is seeing things the way God sees them. And so that's all I'm repeating here is just a slightly difference is but nothing different, but from a different perspective is if we're not aligning our thoughts again with what God says, because the immaturity comes in when I hear from God that this is an amazing thing. He's given me this vision uh, for success for my life. But I'm not using wisdom in preparing myself through timing, through wise counsel. If, if, if immediately we shut off anything that opposes the direction we're going through, we don't want wisdom. We want to go our way. God is the one that is giving you the power to get wealth. And we're talking about this is applicable to business and in life. Uh, and more importantly, no, I can't say more importantly in business, but equally as important, your business, you are your business, that Ooh. you have sound uh, wisdom from Christians because you're a believer in your business. It is so urgent. That's why I say if you need to bypass, you'd be surprised what someone like an LCSW could bring to the table. Don't I mean a coach, an executive coach. And we have a slew of them. I'm one on the Georgia Christian Business Network platform. Or do like what uh, Minister Everson has done in times past and probably still doing with some of those the elders that are still living is gleaning. And, and don't worry about whether they can interpret today's timing or technology or whatever. Just put the thing out there and just see what they'd say to you about it. I, I, I found a quote from uh, Charles Spurgeon that talks about uh, wisdom. Uh, well, talks about the lack of wisdom. And he says, there's no fool so great a fool as a knowing fool. So a man, you know, a person who knows to do and but doesn't do because they want to do things their way, that's truly a fool. And the book of Proverbs has a lot to say about the fool, uh, and which is the op the opposite uh, of, of wisdom, the opposite. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the, the last thing that I uh, had moved into on my, uh, my study of, of, of wisdom and uh, why wisdom is fundament fundamental is if you read throughout the book of Proverbs, uh, and even when you do the Greek translations in the New Testament, you find that the word wisdom is a feminine word. And wisdom mm -hmm. is personified uh, uh, as a female in, uh, in, 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 in Proverbs. Uh, the mm -hmm. word is Sophia. And mm -hmm. I was like, so why is wisdom personified as a woman? And as I was kind of meditating on that and, and uh, praying on that, the Holy Spirit dropped one of the names of God in my spirit, which is El Shaddai. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And El Shaddai is the all-sufficient one, but is also translated as the many-breasted. And so when you have wisdom, when you begin to gain wisdom, it is like an infant suckling at his or her mother's breast. It is the essential as, you know, when that, that child is first um, being nurtured, right? So not only is it the warmth of being at your mom's breast, but it's also the, the milk. And wisdom is, is both the milk as well as the warmth and nurture being in the presence of the nurturer. So when we begin to operate in wisdom, 
we are gaining understanding. We're gaining, as the Amplified Version of that scripture says, that we're maturing. So we're growing, right? But we also get this, people. Wisdom also pulls us into the presence of God. Oh my gosh, yes, 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 for definite. Us into the presence of God, and in his presence is fullness of joy, joy. yeah, and pleasures, yeah, forevermore, forevermore, for and sure. So, that's another reason that I want to submit to you that wisdom is fundamental because it allows us to have uh, just an incredible, um encounter with heavenly father wow yep it's if i could piggyback off of that when she said christmas from god and it said i'm going over here in james 1 5 if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask god who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him to him true wisdom comes from god and um first kings 3 18 13 you may yet how many ask how many pray solomon asked for wisdom and it is the prayer that unlocked the riches of the world and this applies to businesses if your business is not doing ask god what 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 is it that you need to be doing what is it that he's asked you to do and you uh, decided not to do it or whatever the case may be? And I do know this, whenever your agenda is not the same as God's agenda, you will not succeed. See? Wow, wow. I, I think it's a preparation. Wisdom yeah. is, to, is, is part of that preparation. God yeah. shows us and reveals to us that thing that he wants to do for us and through us and it's not just for me it's to impact my family um to impact others to the body of christ to be a kingdom impact is what god wants to do more often than not unfortunately we think it's for us i've been there and i've done that i'm, I'm sorry i've been there and done that but it's not for us as an individual, but it will resolve so much more than what we're wanting or thinking. And so until God can grow us to the place where we interpret that God's purpose is beyond us, I believe we position ourselves for the release to move forward in wisdom. And one of the things you, you brought up, one of my favorite scriptures, uh, Mr. Everson, you said, if any of you lack wisdom, let God uh, ask of God, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally or some places free, freely and upbraid. That's our not. key verse and for next week. So come back next week. Okay, <laughs> I will, but, but, but come back next week and we'll expound from that perspective. But where I'm trying to get to and it shall be given him but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wave, wavereth is it's like a wave line. of the sea driven with winds tossed to and four and for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of god and the place that i wanted to land i'm not going to talk about the other part we're going to talk about next week is right here a double-minded double man is unstable in all of his ways. And this day I'm doing this, this day I'm doing this. Settle yourself down <laughs> and allow God to bring you forth. You're scattered, you're here, you're there, you're here, you're there. What God is looking for is maturity in the body. And maturity is what I believe wisdom is, you know? And I know Pamela, and I just tease and I wanna say, the reason it's a feminine approach to it because we're more mature but no i'm just kidding um i'm just kidding i'm just I kidding that. I just, i'm just well, i'm teasing i'm teasing uh, i like but, what uh, uh, pastor bill winston says he says god is assigning believers to positions of leadership in business ministry education and all spheres of influence and it's time timing for believers to manifest the wisdom of god we should be the ones who are the problem solvers 
in those arenas of life. Right. Right. That is so good. So good. But what I want to say is I want to speak to those that purpose to walk wisely before God. When someone comes to you, don't don't water it down. I mean, speak the truth in love, season your words with salt, but tell them the truth, you know, and for those that are seeking wisdom and, and really want are going hard to get wisdom, to get understanding, please be careful who you're talking to. If you're asking wisdom of someone that doesn't have it, but only has more of themselves and their opinion and what they think would work and, and, and puff you up, you don't need puffing up. You need or, truth. as we said earlier, the whole thing about if somebody's gonna tell you to follow your truth, no, no, there's only the truth. That's I, right. Not right. So, My so truth, make it's sure the truth. it's twofold for those that are, are, are administering wisdom and for those that are receiving wisdom to make certain that my motives and my objective and, and, and those that are seeking, you've got to be careful who you're qualifying just because they may be on it and doing it right now. Uh, you may qualify them based upon the amount of money that they have or the number of jobs or their level that they've attained to currently. Uh, listen, that is not it. That is not what wisdom is about. You can get wisdom, as as Minister Everson said, from my late mom. You yeah. know, she was in her 80s. She was 88 when she passed away. And here is a man esteemed as himself, understanding that she carried a wealth of wisdom. Now, is that not amazing? Now, we, Pamela, we couldn't have planned this. <laughs> this is God. Thank this you, is thank all you for God. Coming on. <laughs> yes, thank you for joining us. We hadn't seen you in a while. Yeah. So, so today is wisdom is fundamental. Next week we're going to talk about get wisdom, and my theme on on that one is wisdom is gettable, and we'll <laughs> talk about how how to get it. And then the third week is about applying wisdom. So, uh, but next week it's wisdom is gettable. We'll I love that. that. Awesome. Come back and join us, Minister Everson, if you are available, because you've added some great value here, you and Toby as well. Okay. Awesome. And All Bianca, right. thank you for manning the post both here and also over on uh, Facebook group. We are sincerely appreciate that. This has been an outstanding show today. We want to thank those of you for joining us. I'm gonna give Pamela some final words in just a second, but I have some announcements that I have to make. Tomorrow, Friday is first Friday noon nugget with the amazing Carmen Codwell. Listen, you're in for a treat. Go to our Facebook group at noon on Friday and she's going to be live there and listen when I walk away from a Carmen Caldwell she's all in my head telling me stuff that she doesn't even know it but I walk around repeating her okay but she's so powerful and she doesn't know it I don't think but she has a level of humor that is in her powerful powerful presentations okay so next week on take charge tuesday we have donna weaver with the good news club and she's going to talk about double the impact child and family i love it double the impact child and family and they're gcbn the corporate uh members and i can't wait to join for donna to join me because she's also doing an event that gcbn is sponsoring and she'll tell you about that next week and it's going to be fun 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 okay uh wellness wednesday pamela's just shared with you what we're going to talk about wisdom is gettable i love that i love that so you want to make sure you follow that up this week and uh if you're here today or you're watching the replay please share it with others and invite them to join as well. I want to tell you, you know, I'm so, so excited that God Golfing Girls is early bird registration open now. And it is good through, I think, uh, through Easter or Resurrection Sunday uh, for you to register. 
And uh, if you're a previous GCBN or GGG attendant, there's an important note that Jessica thought of last night that it's out there in the Facebook group. If you're not on Facebook, text either one of us and we'll tell you something that could make your registration go even smoother and quicker, okay? Um, I'm so excited about what God is doing. April 25th, we're going to be in middle Georgia for our meet and greet. We have an outstanding GCBM member, Monifa Grover, that is going to uh, be our presenter. And so I'm so excited um, for, for you all to join us in middle Georgia chapter on April 25th. I want to say kudos and thank you to Pamela McKinney, our GCBM member that is sponsoring um, that event, and we're so excited uh, to welcome our members in the Middle Georgia chapter to come out and join us. Okay, so that should be fun. Also, tomorrow, I am the Atlanta chapter director for the National Association of Christian Women Entrepreneurs. Tomorrow's luncheon is at 1130. I'm looking for those members that are on this call to show up tomorrow too, but also, if you're new, uh, to NAC, we, we want to invite you to come out. Registration is only $33 uh, for you to be able to attend. And please share it with others. If you need additional information, please reach out to me. I'd love to have you join us. It's not too late. Okay. This has been wonderful. I'm going to give Pamela some following words, but the only thing that I'll add is visit our website at gcbnetwork.com. We are focused, determined, and intentional to put God back in business. And we need your help as a member, as a sponsor. Join up, support the great things that we're doing to help Christians in business experience the double that God has intended for our lives and our businesses this year. Okay. And if are you out there, look at our GGG webpage. We've got our own webpage this year. Uh, Rose did an amazing job, Rose Jean, on that, my administrative assistant. Uh, we worked as a team together to make that thing happen. And it is outstanding, if I may say so myself. Okay. Thank you, guys. Pamela, what do you say? What is a wise oh. word? And I'm going to ask you too, Minister Everson and Toby. Mm -hmm. So wisdom is fundamental, fundamental and wise wisdom fundamental because it, it is unto us both life and uh, favor. As Jesus said, with wisdom, you get life in that moment. Awesome. If you get life, you got me. Awesome. Thank you, Pamela. Okay. Now, uh, Minister Everson and Toby, any final comments on wisdom from you? Well, um, as I said, when I gave that quote, life is lived forward and understood backwards. Uh, this past Saturday, I had the distinct pleasure witnessing something that I grew up learning about, reading about, hearing and seeing him. They unveiled the Martin Luther King statue down in Peace Park. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was the model for that statue, one of the models. Oh my God, awesome, awesome, uh, look at you, look at you, congratulations. When I said life is lived forward and understood backwards, coming up all down in South Georgia during the civil rights era, era elderly people poured into me. I sat at the feet of the elders. I learned all I could from them. I just picked up, and when I got the call to be one of the models for the statue, I reflected back up on that time and all the wisdom they deposited into me. And I said, this is what God was doing. I didn't see it then. Yeah. I didn't understand it. But when they unveiled that statue and I looked up at that statue and I said, whoa, that's what it was awesome. all about. Awesome. Life that's, worth living. That's yes. good. I yes, love it. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that and congratulations. Yes. Any follow up? Tell my husband Toby? about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Toby. Oh, congratulations, Minister. Um, uh, I would like to say that God's timing is amazing. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Beth. Um, and the wisdom from the elders is just okay. So this is the fifth anniversary of mom's heaven birthday. 
So I have been using some of her momisms in my work. So I'm like, God is just affirming and confirming what he's already said to you guys for me. And also wait on the Lord. I think that's part of what I heard when you talked about wisdom. When you a child suckles, it takes time. <laughs> you just don't grab it and go. You got to lay there and rest on him and get his wisdom into you. So you have to wait on him so that you can go. Oh so, my God. Um, this is so good. <laughs> so that's what I got. And I appreciate you guys. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. We appreciate that. Uh, hanging with us even on yesterday for Take Charge Tuesday. Well, listen, this has been wonderful. Again, Bianca, you're just amazing. I so Thanks, appreciate Bianca. you and our entire team at Georgia Christian Business Network from Dr. Jess to Rose and Bianca. We're just a, a team that's made in heaven. They're just amazing. So God has a plan and you are a part of it. Hope to see you on Friday for the Noon Nugget and next week for our Take Charge Tuesday and Build Wellness Wednesday virtual platforms. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take care. Bye-bye now.